Okay, Hel hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today. It's the second session in our campaign, You Can Be a Trader Too. Today's session is titled, How to Read Charts and Open and Close Positions. Basically, during the first session, the previous one, we talked about the beginning of the uh, the journey, how to kickstart your trading journey and how to kickstart your trading in the financial markets. We spoke about uh, the CFDs market. What does it mean to trade in the CFDs market? What are the Forex currencies? What basically uh, are the indices, the metals, energies, etc., etc.? We had a brief discussion about those uh, topics. And today we're going to dive deep into some details about the uh, the charts, uh, the types of orders that we have in, in, in the financial markets. And basically we'll be having some practical uh, session on the uh, MetaTrader 4, how to open and close positions, what is a pip, a lot, a leverage, and so on, etc., etc. Some more in-depth details in order to understand and to grasp some uh, more knowledge about trading in the financial markets. So let's start right away with basically some housekeeping rules that we should follow during today's session in order to uh, create the best trading or the, the best learning experience uh, during today's webinar. So basically, uh, of course, you'll be getting today's slides as well as the recording within three days after the webinar. We will be uh, communicating with you all of course, after the webinar with the slides as well as the uh, recording for this session, please keep your camera and the microphone off for the entire event and the webinar, as well as, of course, you can leave your questions in the chat and we will be having a brief discussion and a question and answers section at the end of the webinar uh, to cover all of your answers and questions at the end of this session. A brief uh, about myself, basically, if you missed the previous session, my name is Mohanadi Oud and I'm the Market Analysis Manager at BU Prime. I've been in the financial uh, industry for quite five to uh, four to five years now, and I'm a certified financial technician by the International Federation of Technical Analysts, as well as a chartered market technician of level two. My main focus is not basically to give out uh, trading signals or uh, just market analysis. My main focus is basically to teach people how to trade. My main focus is to, to develop your skills basically and to let you know that basically trading could be a second source of income that you could trade dependently by time basically and this could um, be uh, your full-time day job uh, one day. So this is basically why we're here today so we can help you kickstart your trading journey and uh, in this career. PU Prime, we are basically a world-leading online brokerage firm. We offer more than 200 uh, financial products who can trade in the financial markets through one broker. We offer you products on the Forex markets, indices, commodities, shares, as well as cryptocurrencies. And for people who basically attended the previous and the first session, we mentioned all of those uh, asset classes. What are the Forex indices, commodities, shares, and cryptocurrencies? We had a brief discussion about those asset uh, or the financial asset classes. And we had some explanation about those. Basically, BU Prime can provide those financial products to you all on one financial platform, which is the MetaTrader 4. We have um, some uh, around 14 offices around the world, uh, servicing up to 120 countries all around the world in, in um, Europe, Asia, Africa, and North uh, America, etc., etc. We will basically uh, try our best to be your trading partner whatsoever. Starting with the content that we're having today. So this is the trading content or the uh, educational content that we are having today. So starting off, we will explain what is a lot moving forward. What is a pip? What is leverage? What, did, what does it mean to sell short? What are the limit orders and what is the stop loss and take profit level? And they are basically very key to your financial success and your risk management in the financial trading. What is the difference between scalping, day trading and swing trading? And we will end with live practice using um, MetaTrader 4 to open and close positions. This is the schedule for today's webinar. So let's start with the uh, content here. What is the lot? 
Basically, the lot is the measuring unit of the trading volume. Whenever you are trading in the financial industry, if you are trading anything in the world, even if you are buying anything from the supermarket or even you are doing grocery shopping, uh, you should quantify the amount of the uh, product that you are willing to buy or even sell if you are uh, doing any sort of commercial trading. Uh, how much do you want to buy or sell? This is basically the trading volume in the trading industry. So in this case, the trading volume in the financial industry, we call this as a lot. So the lot is the measuring unit of the trading volume. It determines how much of anything you want to buy or sell. Basically, this applies to anything that you buy or sell within the CFDs trading, within the CFDs uh, industry as a whole. We mentioned that the CFDs is not only Forex industry, it includes the Forex, it includes the oil trading, it includes gold, as well as cryptocurrencies, as well as metals, commodities, etc., etc. Anything that applies to CFDs trading has as well the lot uh, concept. So the size of the standard lot itself varies depending on the financial asset that you are trading. So for example, if you're talking about the FX or the Forex currencies, we are having this standard lot as 100,000 uh, units. So if you're trading currencies uh, um, with one another, and we will talk later about the Forex currencies pairs, we are talking about the Euro versus the US dollar for as an example. If you're trading one lot, of euro versus dollar it means that you are basically uh, buying a hundred thousand euros versus uh the us dollars if you are trading um the pound versus the us dollar it means that you're basically buying one lot of pound versus dollar which means that you're buying hundred thousand pounds versus the us dollar etc etc so in the forex currencies basically one standard lot it means that uh basically uh the 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 base currency or the main currency you're buying one lot which means you're buying hundred thousand units of this main currency however uh, in the oil markets the one standard lot it, do it doesn't mean a hundred thousand units however it means only one thousand units and in case of the oil markets a unit is a barrel of oil so in this case it means a thousand barrels of oil if you are trading a thousand uh, or or if you are trading uh, one standard lot on on us crude oil for example so this means you are basically trading either buying or selling a thousand barrels of us crude oil um etc etc in the case of gold basically if you are trading one standard uh, uh, lot on gold basically this means that you're buying or selling a hundred units and in gold basically the unit is an ounce of gold and an ounce is basically around 31.3 grams of uh, uh in weight so you are trading 31.3 grams of gold basically this is the standard lot uh in the gold markets let me have a quick look on the chat okay everything is fine so far if you have any questions you can leave it in the chat uh, box and we will be answering this in the question and answer session by the end of this webinar okay however uh, this doesn't mean that in order to go through the uh the trading in the financial industry that you should basically trade with a full standard lot however you can trade fractions with a standard lot uh you shouldn't or you you basically shouldn't have to buy one standard lot uh, of forex currencies or one standard lot of gold or one standard lot of oil etc um, basically uh, you couldn't have enough money for that because 100 ounce of gold or one standard uh, lot on gold at the moment it's basically uh, it would cost you a lot of money so the, the the other way around is that you you can basically buy or sell fractions of a standard lot so in this case we can offer you the option to buy smaller amounts or even sell smaller amounts of currencies or gold or 
oil or cryptocurrencies or shares, etc. So we have the mini lot, which is basically only 10% of the standard lot. And we also have the micro lot, which is only 1% of the mini lot. So in case if you are talking about the Forex currencies, the standard lot is 100,000 units. So the mini lot is only 10%, so it's 10,000 units. So it's only 10,000 euros versus US dollars or 10,000 pounds versus US dollars. In case of the micro lot, it's only 1%, so it's only 1,000 units. In case of oil, basically the mini lot, which is 10%, it's only uh, 100 barrels. Uh, the the 1%, it's only 10 barrels, etc., etc. So you can basically have fractions of smaller amounts from this standard lot. You shouldn't basically buy uh, one full standard lot of any given uh, financial asset of any uh, thing that you would like to trade on. If you have more money, if you have more capital, you can, however, uh, add to more positions. You can buy four or five or maybe even 10 or 20 or 50 standard lots if you have enough capital to do so. Uh, however, some brokers will give you a maximum limit of standard lots that you can have on any specific trade. Uh, some, some, some brokers do uh, 75, some brokers do 100 standard lots per order. Uh, however, as long as you have the enough capital to do so, you are free. Uh, on the other way around, if you don't have enough capital to do uh, enough uh, standard lot, one standard lot, you can basically do fractions of a standard lot. And this is how you tell the MetaTrader platform how much quantity you can basically uh, buy or sell of any financial asset that you have. Another financial terminology that we will definitely need to begin trading in the financial industry is a PIP. A PIP is something that you should understand. It's a shortened word for point in percentage. Basically, in any CFD trading contract, in any contract for difference, whether it be on currency, on a commodity, on metals and energies, on uh, indices, on anything, anything, any financial contract that you're trading on. A pip is the smallest whole unit move the contract can make. Say, for example, if you're talking about a share, a stock price in the US market, if this stock price at the moment is trading at $80, as tight $80, 80.00, What's the smallest move to the upside or to the downside that this U.S. stock can make? You can simply say one cent. Yes, you're correct. This stock can either be with $80.01 or $79.99. That's one cent to the upside or one cent to the downside. That's the smallest move to the upside or the smallest move to the downside that basically this US stock can move because the dollar doesn't have basically any uh, smaller unit uh, of movement to the uh, upside or to the downside. The same concept basically applies in the CFD trading. However, it's not a cent, it's called a pip. So the pip is the smallest unit of movement in both directions, either to the upside or to the downside, that any financial contract, whether it be on currencies or gold or commodities or whatever it could be, this price can move to the upside or to the downside and could be accounted for. Let's have an example. In FX or in Forex currencies, the pip is the fourth decimal digit. It means that after the digit, it's the fourth number, it's the fourth digit. The smallest whole unit move, the USD, which stands for the United States dollar, versus the CAD, which means the Canadian dollar currency pair, which means this pair is the United States dollar versus the Canadian dollar 
this is a currency pair, the currency pair can make no lower movement than 0 0.0001. That's the smallest movement in both directions, either to the upside or to the downside in price that this currency pair can make. It can never go uh, in price uh, either to the upside or to the downside with a lower fraction than this. That's the pip. Another example is the euro versus the US dollar. If the euro versus the US dollar is currently trading at 1.0172 and then price increased to 1.0175, this is basically an increase is three pips, not two pips. Uh, that's my bad because basically it increased from 7.3 to seven five the fourth decimal basically increased from two to five the increase is three pips that's basically a miscalculation from my end if any currency pair containing a Japanese yen the pip is the second decimal digit so now that's an exception the second decimal digit is uh, what it happens in the case of a Japanese yen. So the smallest whole unit move, the JPY, which is the shortened uh, form for the Japanese yen, can make a 0 0.01 um, or on base, uh, basis point. So if the USD, which stands for United States dollar versus the Japanese yen, is trading at 135.86, and the price decreased to 135.80. Now the second decimal digit decreased with six pips because it decreased from 86 to 80. The decrease is now six pips. Okay, great. In oil trading, the pip is also the second decimal digit. So we now have some cases in the forex currencies. It's the fourth decimal digit. Uh, in all currencies, which doesn't include the Japanese yen, because the Japanese yen, as we mentioned, is an exception. The Japanese yen is the second decimal digit, all along with the oil trading. Uh, so the oil and the Japanese yen is the second decimal digit. In gold trading, it's basically the first decimal digit. If the gold price increased from 1830.25 to 1831.25, the increase is 10 pips because basically the first decimal digit increased 10 times. So it's 10 pips, etc. And the indices trading, the pip is the last digit without any decimal places. If the Dow Jones increased from uh, 32,500 to 32,510, so the increase is of 10 pips. That's simply the pip. All you need to know is just to know the cases, when and how the pip is calculated. If you know what the pip means, it's the smallest um, increment of price, either to the upside or to the downside, the price can move in any stock or any a given price on any financial assets that can happen um, in the markets. Moving forward with another concept, what is the leverage? If I can ask you, what is the amount or the capital that you're looking to start with in the financial industry or the financial trading, you can tell me maybe I would be looking to invest a hundred dollars and what do you expect from the hundred dollars as profit you will tell me i'm expecting um maybe 10 or 20 percent per month uh how do you believe that you'll be able to to get or to receive 20 or, or 30 percent per month from your hundred dollars investment uh only from your hundred dollars Basically, this happens with the leverage. The leverage is something we, as a broker, will help you with. We will give you, we will lend you some money 
to increase your purchasing power in the market. Uh, it depends actually upon how much money you would like to borrow uh, and how much because uh, it, it depends also on your risk appetite. Uh, more money, it means more risk and of course more profit. If you want 30 times your money, if you have $100, you can get actually up to 500 times your capital, which means 500 times your profit or 500 times your risk. Um, some people like to keep it somehow limited, so they take only 1 to 30 leverage. So each dollar they invest, they actually get $30 in return from the broker. So they is somehow, uh, they keep it to, a, to some sort of limit. Instead of 1 to 500, they keep it 1 to 30 or, or 1 to 20. So it's only 20 times higher risk, not 500 times higher risk. Okay, so the leverage, it's basically something that helps both retail and professional traders. Leverage in Forex and CFDs enables them to open larger positions with smaller initial deposits. Why is that? Because the broker basically will add to your position with their personal money. The broker will add the remaining of the amount. If you are basically uh, willing to invest in a position uh, which requires hundred thousand dollars and you only own a uh, five thousand dollars out of those hundred thousand dollars the broker would be willing to provide you with the remaining ninety five thousand uh, dollars and to support you enter th this position by borrowing money from the broker traders are essentially increasing the purchasing power of their trading positions a trader's Profit or loss is returned to the broker when he or she closes a leveraged trading, trading position, which means that if you entered this position, you entered with $5,000 and the broker supported you with $95,000, you basically earned uh, another $5,000 on top of your initial deposit of $5,000. You get to keep 100% of the profits that you made. The broker will only keep uh, the, the initial deposit or the initial leverage that they paid for you, which is the $95,000. They won't take anything of your profits. You get to keep your $5,000 uh, completely yours. However, in case of the loss, um, you might be uh, vulnerable to lose the $5,000 as your initial deposit completely uh, only then the broker will not be uh, supporting you in your loss. They will take the $95,000 as their initial deposit or their in investment, and you will be losing your whole sum amount uh, because it's higher risk, higher profit. And the money borrowed will be returned to the broker. The trader must deposit a per portion of the trade's value in order to access and maintain a leverage position the margin refers to this deposit so you only deposit a margin of this uh, trade and uh, the, the broker supports you with the remaining amount you can open a large position with a small margin if you use a trade uh, a trading leverage ratio this means that the trader can open positions 30 times the size of the margin when trading with leverage of 1 to 30 and this basically will be 500 times the size of their margin when trading with the leverage of 1 to 500. Because of this, any gains or losses will be subject to the same 500 times increase. This is basically the leverage. If you have any questions, please leave it in the chat box. Let me have a quick look in on the uh, chat box. Okay, so now you want to access the MetaTrader platform. You now understand what a pip is and what is the uh, lot size and how much quantity you are willing to buy or sell 
of a specific financial asset and you want to basically enter a position uh say on gold you want to buy or sell on gold what are the buy and sell orders uh, that are there basically on in the metatrader uh, platform and not even on the on the metatrader meta platform but even on any platform a decent trading platform that you could use basically we have two types of uh, trading orders the first type is the market orders and the second type we call them pending orders the first type is the market order which is basically uh, to buy or sell at the current price say for example you opened the gold price you can see that the gold at the moment is trading at around 1830 you have done your technical analysis you have asked your financial advice our um, financial agent um, you have someone who uh, gives you financial advice and he, he he told you that basically gold is a good buy around 1830 and you can buy at the moment right now um, so you just access your uh, trading platform and you want to buy now at 1830 what should you do you should access the market order right now you will just give the platform a current market order uh, buy so the platform will buy for you gold at the current market price this is simple as that the platform will buy for you a gold contract at the current market price what if you want to sell uh, gold at the moment it's the same a market order will sell for you uh, gold at the current price and that's a market order the other uh, type of the uh, orders are basically the pending orders. And they are basically divided into two types. We have the limit orders and the stop orders. They are basic, basically pretty much uh, the same or pretty much uh, similar, so much similar in, in, in what they do. They are pending orders and they are getting, uh, are they, they are about to get you confused. I don't want you to, uh, pay too much attention to, to, to what they actually mean. However, I want you to only know that both of them are basically pending orders, whether they are limit orders or stop orders. What does a pending order mean? A pending order means that I am setting a price for the platform. If the price reached a specific price in the future, I want the platform to automatically take a specific action for me whether to buy or sell or get out of a current trade i have that's basically it so for example i am watching gold at the moment and gold is trading at around 1830 and i'm waiting for gold to reach 1850 for me uh to to, to sell what i have or to to enter a new sell position uh, and instead of having to wait instead in, in, in front of the screens, uh, maybe I have other work to do, I have a family outing, I want to go to sleep, whatever it is, I don't want to or I shouldn't uh, stay in, in, in front of the screen. So basically, I want to go do other things. What I should do is I, I, I could give uh, a pending order to my platform if price reached 18 uh, 50 or uh, $1,850 per ounce on gold price, please sell this amount. You can close the platform now and go to sleep because this is a pending order. Whenever the price will basically reach the conditions that you mentioned, the action will be taken automatically. This is basically trading with pending orders, whether it could be buying or selling at specific prices, in the future what does it mean to sell short if you are new to the financial industry and the financial trading you could be confused when i say to sell gold because um normally in in, in normal or in in real life uh 
people make profits only by one way. Uh, you buy something when it's cheap and you sell it when it's expensive. So you make money uh, with, with this transaction. So you buy cheap and you sell expensive, you make money. Uh, you buy a stock for $20, you sell it for $40, you make $20 in profit and so on. What if I told you that I'm expecting a specific stock to decline in price from $40 to $35 and you can make a profit from this decline and you don't even own the stock? Uh, would that be believable? Yes, you can do this. Uh, simply, this is a short selling transaction that you can do. In this case, if you don't own the stock and you do expect that this stock will decline in price and you want to make profits out of this and move to the downside, you will basically, uh, when, when, when the stock price at the moment is at $40, you will find someone who owns the stock at the moment and you will some sort of lend the stock from them or borrow the stock. You will get the stock from them as for one week, for example, can you please lend me your stock? I just want to borrow the stock from you for one week for a commission or from a small premium or for a small um, rent price or whatever it is, okay? Whenever you have the stock, you will just go to the market at the moment and sell it for $40. You now have $40 in your pocket. Uh, you can just enjoy your life for one week, go to sleep, okay? And if your analysis is 100% correct, and after one week, the price actually went down from $40 to $35. You can go back again, and take out $35 from your pocket, and go again and, and, and buy the same stock, but for less you now have the same stock again and you have five pockets or five dollars in your pocket you would go back to the stock's owner you would give him his stock again he basically lost nothing and you actually made five dollars per stock uh, as profits this is selling short this is how we make money in the financial markets even if things are going down so if things are going up we buy cheap and we sell expensive even if things are going down we sell expensive and we buy cheap one more time to make profits even if things are going down this is uh selling short So we talked about the pending orders and, and how you can basically leave a uh, pending order to the markets while you can go to sleep. So basically this are, or those are the four types of pending orders that we have. Um, if you want to buy, you have two buy orders. If you want to sell, you have two sell pending orders. It's either you have buy stop or buy limit. It's either you have sell stop or sell limit. The, the difference between a stop order on a limit or a limit order is basically whether you um, you believe uh, uh, the price will continue or reverse in, in, in direction. So in this case, if I believe basically that price will continue to move up, I want to buy because I, can, I believe that it will continue to move even higher. So this is a buy stop. The other scenario, if the price is going down and I believe it will reverse and go up, so it's a buy limit here. I, I'm, I'm believing that it will reverse to the upside, so it's a buy limit. A buy limit order is always placed below the current price. So if price is here, I'm placing the buy limit down. For the price to go down, fulfill my buy limit, reverse and go up. In this case, if price is here, I believe that price will go up, fulfill my order and continue going up. In this case, I'm basically, I believe that price is continuing to the upside. In this case, I believe price will reverse to the upside. In case, in both cases, 
I am buying. The same well goes and applies on uh, the sell orders. However, on the opposite side, the sell stop order. I believe if I'm, the, the price is currently here, price will decline to fulfill my sell order because I believe it will continue moving lower. So this is a sell stop. The sell limit is basically if price is here, I believe that if price went up to this limit, price should reverse after fulfilling my sell limit and start going down. So basically I should sell here. So it's a sell limit. This is a buy limit. This is a buy stop and this is a sell stop. It might be a little bit confusing. However, whenever you are trying to fulfill a pending order on the MetaTrader 4, you can never get it wrong because if you are trying to fulfill a pending order wrong, the MetaTrader 4 will tell you there is something wrong. Uh, the, the parameters couldn't be right. And we will check this in a moment whenever we are on the MetaTrader 4. The last thing that we need to check today is basically the difference between the scalping day trading and the swing trading. Uh, the difference is basically the time frame. Um, what I mean is, if you're someone who wants to get in too quickly, if you're a high frequency trader, uh, if you want to get in multiple trades per day and to uh, maybe uh, 10 or 15, 20 trades per day, very quick profits or very quick losses, and you, you basically don't want for any quick trade to or to, uh, to last more than one or two or three hours and so on. So you are basically a scalper. Uh, you should basically trade with this scalping method. So uh, the scalping depends on small price changes and quick resale profits are the hallmarks of the scalping trading strategy. It's something that high frequency traders do. They are someone who are basically uh, fully independent traders. They know what they do. They are, uh, of course, experienced traders. They have been doing this for years and ages because basically it's uh, highly profitable. However, it's highly risky. And scalping is a day trading term that refers to a strategy that emphasizes high volume trading with small profits. So say, for example, you have entered today 25 trades and each trade you only made profits for five dollars so the total profits per day is only 125 dollars uh because it's only five dollars per trade and it's only 25 trades however this is how you make money uh many many trades and small profits per every trade strict exit strategies are essential when trading scalping because one large loss can wipe out all the small gains the trader has worked so hard to achieve imagine if you don't have some strict exit tra strategies you can simply uh in one trade uh, for example lose 60 or 70 or even 80 or 100 dollars out of the 125 dollars you have just made so uh, for the day you are in loss or even you are break even you have been uh, spending hours and hours of trading a day and you are on loss. It's so hard to believe it. For this strategy to be effective, you will need the right equipment, such as a live feed, of course, a direct access broker and the endurance to place numerous uh, trades. Day trading. Day trading is basically uh, lower in frequency and the number of trades it takes a uh, longer time to achieve and it's basically l less riskier and of course more i mean uh, lower profitable and of course lower in in, in, in in risk too this is buying and selling on the foreign exchange market in a single trading day is known as day trading it means that positions are closed at the end of each day and new ones are opened at the next day. In order to take advantage of small market movements, day traders buy and sell currency pairs multiple times a day. 
They are multiple times a day. However, they are not high frequency traders like the scalping. So they are lower in frequency. Day trading, which is also known as intraday trading, is not for the casual investor because it necessitates a significant investment of time, effort, and concentration. There must be a high volume of trades executed quickly, but the profits are only marginal. So it's the same somehow like the scalping. However, it's uh, lower in the number of trades. Uh, it, it takes more time to achieve. I mean, if the scalping is targeting 25 or 30 trades per day, the day trading is only five or six only per day. The scalping expected uh, time for each trade to end is only a couple of minutes. The day trading uh, takes a couple of hours, etc., etc. So it's the same concept. However, it takes more time, less trades, uh, lower risk and lower profits. Moving on to the swing trading, we will do the same. Lower number of trades, lower uh, profits and longer time to reach uh, the or to close the trades. Swing trading basically takes weeks or even months for the trades to end. Swing traders are basically the, the, the uh, lower or the less uh, time needed uh, in, to, to spend in front of the screens. You don't need more than one or two hours only to, to just scan the markets per day. Swing traders are basically, most of them are part-time traders because they have other work to do. I'm basically a swing trader because I do have my full-time job. Even as uh, I'm, I'm a market analysis manager, uh, I do my analysis job in the morning. I do my courses. I do my trading education and so on. However, I'm not a full-time trader yet. So uh, for my personal trading, I'm still a swing trader. I don't have... Uh, my full day to watch the markets so i'm a swing, swing trader um and and basically i don't need uh or I, I don't feel that anyone could need to be a full-time trader as long as you're doing it as a part-time job and you know what you're doing swing trader could be a very good job and a very good thing to do it's less stressful it's uh it's profitable on the long term it's something that doesn't require time. It doesn't uh, put any stress. And at the end of the day, it's it, it's fun and, and, and it's profitable at the end. Uh, and it takes time. It takes effort. However, it's nice to do. That is when trading. I believe there are no questions yet. Okay, we have finished basically the... Uh, the, the slides part let's have a quick uh look on the meta trader for for now and i'll be waiting for any questions if you have Okay, we have a question here. Good day, sir. Can one combine both swing and scalping trading in a day? Um, basically, um, no, I don't believe this is quite uh, something that you can do. Uh, you need to focus on one specific thing for you to master it. Um, can you both swing and scalping trading in a day? Maybe you can do this. However, you need to be experienced in both. And this ain't easy. I mean, if you have been trading scalping for years and um, you have been doing swing trading for quite some time, so you have experience in both, you can then switch between both. I mean, if you have time during the day, uh, you can do scalping. If you have work during some days, you can only do swing trading. So yes, you can combine between both. However, it requires that you have experience in both and it ain't easy. Uh, however, my advice is focus on one thing to start with 
which is a swing trading. It's easier to handle and it's easier to master with at the beginning. Uh, scalping has most of the profits. However, most of the margin calls are basically uh, in the uh, lower time frames in the scalping. I I uh, I hope the the question is answered uh, as you have you would like. So yeah, let's have a look on the match trader. We we mentioned basically during the previous session uh, a quick user interface on the Meta Trader Four. This is a demo account from BU Prime here. The, those are the instruments that you can trade with or trade on with with BU Prime. This is a demo account, ten thousand dollars. Okay, what do we have here is this is the gold price. This is the gold chart. Uh, this is basically the symbol for the gold. It's called XAU, which is the symbol for gold. And this is quoted in the USD price. You can see here the price is currently $17.40 per ounce. Okay. Okay, on top of the MetaTrader, you can find a new order. If you press on that, you will be asked, what is the symbol that you would like to trade on? And it's, of course, the same symbol that you are on. You can change that. However, I don't advise you to do so. You can just leave it as it is. So you're trading on gold. What is the volume of the trade? And the volume is basically the lot lot size that we explained earlier during this session in, in this case if we basically wrote down one so it's one lot size one standard lot and this means we are trading a hundred ounce per a um, hundred ounce on gold uh, right now okay this is the stop loss and take profit we'll mention those later on the type is basically whether market ex execution or pending order. Let's choose a market execution for now. And we have both options, whether to buy or sell. Um, a buy will basically buy by market. This means it will buy by market price, which is the current market price at the moment. And sell, this means it will sell short, as we explained uh, earlier today. Uh, at this market price, let's try and buy one lot by market price. Here we go. The order is fulfilled. You can see here the order number. This is the ticket ID for the order. The time is 7 July 2022. It's 1857 where I am at the moment. The order is buy one lot. The symbol is gold. The price that we have. Uh, or the entry price was basically 1739.79. The SL is stop loss and the TP is take profit. We have left it empty, so it's basically a zero. This is the current price and it's changeable. This is basically, um, it, it, it varies. The commission is zero and the swap is zero. And the profit is basically changing according to what is happening with the trade. Okay, let's enter another position. However, uh, let's choose maybe two lots for a sell. Here we go, another sell order for two lots on gold. That's the uh, sell order. The buy order is now on profits. Let's close this one. I accept terms and conditions. Please accept it right now. I need to close, oh, it's no longer in profits. Okay, I'll wait for this to be on profits to close it. Okay, so this is a buy order and this is a sell order on gold. Both are basically market price. Uh, it's they, they are not uh, any pending orders. We have closed the buy order uh, on profits. Very, very small profits, only $8.
So let's try the pending orders. New order, instead of market execution, we'll go through with the pending order. We have four types, as we mentioned, buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, or sell stop. Let's choose the buy limit. And let's choose any order or any, um, I mean, any price. Let's see whether we are right or not. It definitely said that something is wrong here. Uh, when it says something is wrong, you should know that you are basically on the wrong side of the order. So instead of buy limit, you should choose the other thing, which is buy stop, because 1860 is something, the price 1860 is above the current price. So you are expecting that the price will go up and you are you're willing to buy because you are actually uh, expecting that it will further go higher. So it should be a buy stop. You should place the order here. And where did it go? Just a moment. Here we go. So it's down here. However, it's not showing any profits or loss yet um, because it's basically a pending order. So it's a buy stop. If price reached 1860, basically uh, the order will be fulfilled. It's a pending order. If you want to cancel it, you can simply cancel from here. A new order. Let's try another one. A pending order. Let's try a sell limit and let's enter any price. Let's see if we're, uh, I don't think this will be accepted. It's too close to current price. Importing, for example, is invalid. Why is that? Let's do it sell stop. Accept it. Thank you so much. If price uh, declined to 1540, the platform will automatically sell with one lot. That's for sure, 100% for sure. Let's do it right this time. So uh, pending order, we have tried the buy stop and the sell stop. We need the sell limit, which means basically we need a higher price than the current price. We need, for example, 1763. Thank you so much. If price went up, to 1763 the uh platform will sell gold at 1763 the last one to do is basically the buy limit if gold price declined to 1730 this should work fine and here we go those are the pending orders if you want to cancel you can cancel both from here This is basically a quick um, practical session on the MetaTrader 4. This is basically very uh, much on loss here, <laughs> $160. Let's close this. It's already a demo account, no problem. Okay, um, so that's all for today's session. I don't think we do have uh, many questions. Thank you so much. Um, we will be meeting in the next session on next Thursday.